there in Sydney. So I've titled this service, The Return of Jesus in Glory, The Return of Jesus in Glory. And uh, come with me to the month of February, February, and the year is 1519, 1519. And there was a huge ship, or several ships, I should say. These were carabelas, as the Spanish called them. And they were sailing towards Veracruz, Mexico. It was in the Atlantic. And the commander was named Hernan, Hernando Cortes. He had left Cuba. He was coming to what we know today as Mexico. And he was sailing in these huge ships called Caravelas. They had these big white sails that looked like clouds. It was an encounter of two different worlds. And the Indians that saw these ships coming towards the shores of Veracruz, Mexico, were astonished. You see, because the Aztecs believed in a, many gods, they were polytheistic, but there was one god that had promised to come back one day, and he would come with the clouds. And his name was Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl. And if you come with me to Uxmal, which is one of the ancient Mayan cities in the peninsula of Yucatan, you will see that they have a sculpture of this god. And he is the serpent god, the god with feathers and wings. It, it is a remnant of what the Bible says in the book of Genesis that the serpent, the old serpent, had wings and feathers and could fly. And mm. so this Quetzalcoatl was the name the Aztecs gave this god. And when you go to Ixmal, you see this sculpture of him and he has a head of a human. And he seems to be inside a helmet of a white man like the Spaniards who had come. I've seen it myself. I was shocked and looking at the head of this serpent. And this was built many years before the Spaniards came. I, I would say hundreds of years before the Spaniards came. So the Aztecs who came after the Mayas believed that Quetzalcoatl had promised that he would leave, but he would return one day. He was going to leave to a very far place and he would return with the clouds. And now look and behold, here come the Spaniards. Here comes Hernan Cortes. He's in this big ship, this big wooden ship with these white sails that look like clouds. And he comes out and gets on his horse a white horse <clears throat> and he stands on his white horse with this big cross i have in my hands the world book and under the subtitle hernando cortes it has there a picture of hernan cortes i don't know if you can see it maybe too far, but mm. it illustrates him stand, uh, sitting on his white horse with a cross and with a sword. And when the Indians saw this, the Native Americans, they thought it was one person. They mm. just saw part human and part horse. Well, they'd never mm. seen a horse before. The mm. horse had uh, become extinct. And they were just shocked. Now come with me 
to the book of Revelation in Revelation chapter 19. And we're going to read that when Jesus comes back to earth, he's going to be riding a white horse, very similar to Hernan Cortes during this encounter of two different worlds. In uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, 19, 11, it says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And it says in verse 15, And out of his mouth goeth this sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Now, I'm looking at this painting from the Aztecs, and it has Hernán Cortés on this white horse with a sword, just like the scriptures mention. And these Indians are beholding him, including their king, Montezuma, eventually when he reaches Tenochtitlan. But what happened when Hernán Cortés came? It was a new world order. And he came on this white horse. It's interesting that throughout history, different men have gotten on white, white horses to go about conquering. Alexander the Great was on a white horse when he fought against the Persians and he overcame. I think about the history of the United States. George Washington had a white horse and he mm. went to battle with the white horse. I think about Napoleon when he led the armies of France against the armies of Europe and seemed to have conquered all the known world. He was also on a white horse. No, Simon Bolivar, that's right, was also. Someone told me that uh, San Martin was also on a white horse. Mm, yes. And Jesus is going to come to establish a new world order. The old world order will end. The yes. old things will be destroyed. The, not one rock shall remain upon another. Mm. And Jesus is going to come, he says, with the clouds of heaven. We go with the gospel writer Mark, Mark chapter 13, verse 26, Mark 13, verse 26. And it says, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power. And glory. Now read the text before it. Verse 25. And the stars of heaven shall fall. We believe that happened in 1833. But I want to tell you something else. They're going to fall again. When Jesus comes. These meteorites are going to fall. The Bible says that. They're going to be huge meteorites. Are going to fall from heaven. And the powers that are in heaven. Shall be shaken. That has never happened. I mean, I have felt earthquakes. I don't know if you can feel tremors in Australia. Does it ever shake in Australia? I, Not very much. I, only once. Only once. Okay, well, I have been in places where the earth shakes. Mm -hmm. I've been in Central America and I felt the tremors. I've been in California mm -hmm. and I have felt them. But here... The heaven is going to be shaken. It's going to be moved. It's going to roll up like a scroll, the Bible mm. says, so that Jesus can come on his white horse and the armies of heaven. And when he comes, it'll be more mighty than the coming of Hernán Cortés to establish a new world order, a new language, a new culture, a new kingdom. Mm. Are we ready for that coming? There is a text in the book of Luke. I want to read with you, please. Luke chapter 19. And Jesus told the parable. He told the story. Luke chapter 19, verse 12. 
Luke 19, verse 12. And he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. That's what mm -hmm. the Aztecs believed, that Quetzalcoatl would come back. And you see all of these pagan nations with all of their legends have certain truths of God that have been perverted with time. Mm. The story of the return of Jesus was known even before the flood. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, foretold of the coming of Christ. He saw the coming of Christ in vision. He saw him on the white horse. He saw the millions and millions of angels coming with him. Mm. You know, Hollywood is preparing the minds of people for the coming of Quetzalcoatl, the old serpent, because the devil will try to imitate Christ before mm. Jesus returns. Just this week, I was listening to National Public Radio, and they were interviewing uh, someone who has written a book on, on flying saucers, on UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And he was talking with the hosts, and they he said, there's three big questions in life. And he said, um, is there a God? Are there other lives in other planets? And what happens after death? He says, those are the three big questions. And the interviewer, who's not a believer, says, I know the answer to one of them, she says. And I was waiting to see what she's going to say. He knows the answer. She knows the answer to one of these. And she says, I know that we are not alone. Mm -hmm. We are not alone in the universe. She didn't know if God existed. She didn't know what happens after death. The Bible tells us we know that God exists. We know what happens when death comes. You fall asleep until the coming of Christ when he's going to resurrect. Those that have mm. confessed his name. And they will be taken to heaven. And those of us who remain will be transformed in a twinkling of an eye. But that we are not alone. So the mindset has been established. In many circles within the Western world. I believe in Australia too. They don't believe anymore in this evolution. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> they don't believe in creation. They believe we are a lost colony. We are a lost colony that... <laughs> Thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, they came in this flying saucer and they let the people out. And those were the first people that uh, that established our world. And they're going to come back. They're going to mm. come back. So they're, they're establishing this in the minds of people. And when the devil comes to impersonate Christ, he's going to deceive the world. He will try to deceive very elect but we will not be deceived because we know that when jesus comes he will come with the clouds of heaven he'll come with millions of angels it'll be the end of this world order a new world will be established he will take his his faithful those who are called those who are elect will be taken with him to heaven and so he is that certain nobleman that went into a far country into orion And he will return. Now, if I had a telescope and that we could all see it together in Australia now that, that it's daytime, it'd be a little harder. But now in America, it's dark. It's, it's nighttime. Here in the East Coast, we could look through this telescope and we would try to see Orion. And I want to tell you something. In Orion, there is a horse. It's called the Horse Nebula of Orion and it's expanding it's opening up that is when Jesus needs to come through Orion so it's opening up on this horse you can you can search it on google the nebula the horse nebula of Orion you'll see the form of this horse this white horse mm. Is it coincidental? I believe it is not. And the scientists tell us, these astronomers, that that's where they have the greatest amount of light, that there are so many suns there, that there are so 
many stars and planets. They have identified many places around the universe where there is life, but we're the only one that departed. And mm -hmm. Christ is going to come. And we need to prepare for his coming. We need to set our priorities straight. We don't know when we may be called to rest. And when mm -hmm. Hernan Cortes came, he, he didn't live up to the Christian standard. But with his sword, many died. Mm -hmm. When Christ comes, we read in the book of Thessalonians, please. First of Thessalonians, what's going to happen as we draw this analogy between the coming of the old world with the new world. In first of Thessalonians, we read about the coming of the Lord. And, you know, he says here that as he comes, it will be a great change for the entire universe, a great change for our entire planet. And it is, okay, it's second of Thessalonians, second of Thessalonians chapter one, second of Thessalonians chapter one. And it says, Verse 7, on, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is going to be a new type of fire. When Hernan Cortes came with the Spaniards, they had cannons. And with these cannons, they had fire that blew these cannonballs that would go out and wherever they crashed, they would cause fire and they could see the smoke come up. This is going to be new fire that will come with the coming of the Lord. It says in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now, not all the Indians fought against Hernan Cortes. Some of them made peace. And they were able to enter into the new Spanish world. We need to make peace with Jesus today to enter into the new world. It is real. History repeats itself. I, I want to tell you this story. It's, it's a bit shocking. It's a true story. It took place in Cuba. And it happened last century. Communism had come to the country. And there was a dad and his wife and a daughter. And the daughter had gotten involved in communism with the revolution she even became a soldier. She started to dress herself in green. She was part of the militia. And dad decided he was going to leave the country. So he called his daughter and said, look, I'm going to go to a better place. I'm going to go to a better country. Uh, I don't like what's happening here in Cuba. Mm -hmm. um, and the daughter said, dad, you're mistaken. This is a revolution. It's going to get better. Hmm. It's a great place. We're hmm. all going to be equal. There's going to be education for everyone, medicine for everyone. You can't go, Dad. And Dad was telling his daughter, look, there is a better country. Hmm. And I'm going to go there. They have freedom. We don't have freedom here. They have liberty. We don't have liberty here. You can have your own business, your own enterprise. There's abundance of food. Food is lacking here. People have big houses. And the daughter said to her dad, listen, if you leave, dad, you're going to die for me. You will cease to be my father. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. And that's how the way it ended. How sad. 
And dad took his things. He took his wife. He had invited his daughter. She said no. She didn't want to go to this new place, this new country in the north. She didn't want to come to America. And so the dad came to America, came to Miami. The decades went by. You know, the pages of time just went by. And one day, his daughter decided to leave Cuba because it wasn't what she expected. Mm. And she came to Miami and started to ask where her father was. And she got the address mm. and found a location where he was living. And she knocked on the door and kept knocking. And now this old man with gray hair mm. comes mm. to the door and opens. And she says, Papa, Dad, mm. it's me. Your daughter, don't you recognize me? Remember, we were together in Cuba, and now I'm here, Dad. Mm -hmm. And said her, from bottom to top, from top to bottom, and says to her, I once had a daughter, but she died in Cuba. I think you're mistaken. I don't know you. Bang, and closed the door. Mm -hmm. And we say, that sounds a bit cruel to have closed the door. But listen to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. And this gentleman I'm telling you about, who said he didn't recognize his daughter, when she appeared at his house, was my uncle's friend. So I heard this story directly from my uncle. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 21. No, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew mm. chapter 6. Matthew 6, 21. Confuse the T with an R. Uh, Matthew <laughs> chapter 6, verse 21. It says, uh, 21. Or your treasure is when I can mm. serve to it. Take no thought. No, that's not it. And I just looked it up. Give me a moment. I'll give you the text. Matthew. It's um, Matthew chapter seven. It's seven twenty one. Seven twenty one, and it says. 721. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity you know why he says that that they worked iniquity is because they had not done the will of the father mm -hmm. they had not lived according to the law of the father in Hmm. In Luke chapter 13, it says the same thing. And they're going to say many things. Luke chapter 13, verse 26. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. <laughs> and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of heaven, and you yourself thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down 
in the kingdom of God. From the south, you know, Australia is all there in the south. Tasmania, mm -hmm. even further in the south. New Zealand, they're going to come from there, faithful. From the west, here in America. From the north, from the, from the east. But they will be very different. A.T. Jones, and with this story I finish, A.T. Jones said that in that day many will come to heaven and they will knock on the door of heaven. And they're going to, Jesus is going to open the door and they're going to say, Lord, we're here. We, we've preached in your name. We've kept the Sabbath. We've paid tithe. We're not like these other people that disregarded you. Open up. We want to come in. Jesus will say, I don't know you. Close the door. And then A.T. Jones says another group is going to come. They're going to knock on the door. Jesus is going to open and they're going to say, Lord, we do not merit to come in. We don't deserve it. But we plead for your mercy. If you will allow us sin, please, out of your mercy. We, we, we present your sacrifice as the only guarantee we have. There's nothing that we did that was that's worth heaven. And Jesus will open the door wide and say, come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the beginning of time. Yes, we need to keep the Sabbath. Yes, we need to pay tithe. Yes, we need to preach the word. Yes, we need to have Lord's Supper. Yes, we need to share the gospel. But none of that merits the kingdom of God. Only Jesus merits that kingdom yes. of God. Only the sacrifice of Christ, and we must claim his name. We must claim his righteousness that we may enter into the new world that will be established. The Bible ends by saying, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Let's be part of it. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.